I'd like to now introduce David Toulon, who's from Plant and Food Research, and David's going to give us some illustrations on some science that does provide some measurable solutions in biosecurity. So welcome, David. Thank you very much, uh, Jen. So I'll just go straight to Roger for my beer, shall I? Is that how it works? Absolutely. <laughs> um, so uh, thank you very much. Um, how many of those have read my abstract? Or don't, because <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that. Um, um, <laughs> basically, now I've got to work out how this works, OK? So um, yeah, I guess all of us are looking at the same thing through slightly different eyes. And I'm going to look at through uh, biosecurity uh, through, again, a different set of eyes. Ah, good, that's all up there. And what I'm going to do is, um, is look at the, the mega trends uh, in the world and try and relate those to biosecurity and try and re relate those to New Zealand in particular. Um, I think, yeah, uh, just briefly, um, I'm not representing plant and food today. I'm representing um, the Better Border Biosecurity uh, Collaboration, Jen, of which uh, plant food plays a significant role. Um, but I'm really here as my role as director of B3. Now, B3, uh, Better Border Biosecurity, is a research collaboration uh, with four CRI partners and one university partner. Uh, also um, has a number of governments, uh, government departments as uh, stakeholders, end users, plus a, a growing number of, of, of industry partners. And its role, I can read that down there, are science-based solutions to reduce the rate of establishment of high-impact damaging and unwanted pests, diseases and weeds, uh, threatening New Zealand's productive, plant and, uh, productive and natural uh, systems. In some ways, it's, better, it's easy to say what we don't do. So we don't do long-term management, and we don't work on animals, although we do work on what animals feed on, uh, which are quite important. Um, I'm now going to look at megatrends, um, and these are uh, defined as large, slow-moving trends with stable trage trajectories. Um, they don't predict the future, but they give some indication of what the future is going to be like. Um, so some uh, insight into our, our medium to long-term future. Now, I've cheated um, and gone to... Um, a number of sources to look at these mega trends, and some of the um, those are, are indicated on the slide here. Um, in some cases, mine are exactly the same as some of these, so I haven't gone too far from them. But I've tried to summarise the main ones, and especially the main ones that relate to uh, border biosecurity. The mega trends that uh, that I've come up with, but others have as well, relate to diminishing and or erratic resources. Uh, Another one around uh, the demographic or, or, uh, and or social change, one around geopolitical dynamics, and one about advances in technology. Um, and we've heard a bit about that today. And of course, all of these uh, trends are strongly interconnected. It's interesting, and we're just talking about this at lunchtime, that Stephen Hawkins uh, has predicted we need to get off this planet in 100 years. Um, I haven't picked that up on these ones, I'm afraid, but uh, yeah, be that as it may. So firstly, um, looking at um, diminishing and unreliable resources, and on a world, uh, uh, world level, we're looking at greater demand for energy, food, and water based on finite resources and uh, growing and more urbanized uh, populations. Um, this is having an impact on our natural systems, uh, in terms of biosecurity loss, and also having an impact on our uh, productive systems in terms of food security. And climate change is, of course, a major disruptor there, as are invasive species. Um, invasive species, as we know, impact both our natural systems and uh, our productive sector systems. So in New Zealand, uh, we're in, the, in, in a, I guess, a wonderful situation of being resource rich in some of those things. We are more about trying to feed other people uh, rather than feeding ourselves. But um, that uh, industry or whatever you'd like to call it is where we get our wealth from. So it's actually very important that, uh, that we protect that. And then, of course, we have, uh, we've heard today, we have a very important and highly valued ecologically and culturally significant uh, uh, set of natural systems. 
And we're finding more and more these two are interdependent on each other, and I think myrtle rust is a really good example of that. It's going to impact both systems, and we've seen recently with uh, the great white cabbage butterfly a similar situation where we have an invasive species that uh, is impacting on both. Um, really, I think this, uh, this first megatrend is the driver for uh, border biosecurity, and this is really um, going back to my original talk about uh, research across the border biosecurity bio continuum uh, and some of the research that we do. So um, we look at what other pest diseases and weeds are risks to New Zealand, how do they get here, how do, they, how do we identify them, um, can we pick them up as soon as they get here so we know if the earlier we get them we can eradicate them. So that's the biosecurity continuum of my original talk. The second uh, mega trend is around demographic and social change, and we look at, if we look at the world, um, it's the population's growing, it's ageing, and it's ageing uh, particularly in some, some parts of the world uh, more than others. Uh, it's uh, becoming more and more urban, and there is increasing uh, migration, and uh, perhaps that's mitigating the effects of uh, ageing in some of the OEC con OECD countries. Um, yeah, well, I think one, one point there is that by two, 2050, 75% of the population is going to be in Asia and Africa. So a very unbalanced world in some ways. For New Zealand, the growth uh, is in Maori, Asian and Pacific uh, peoples. Um, and we, uh, I, I think this is a really interesting graphic in terms of, of, of ageing. The only uh, group that really is increasing and by percentage over time is the plus 65 year olds. Um, also in increasingly urban, 39% um, of, of the New Zealand population will be in Auckland by 2043. And I've put migration in there but we generally uh, have quite low levels of, of migration or immigration compared I think to when you consider the numbers of tourists uh, and people crossing our borders. Now, the third slide on, on some of these is really about what we're trying to do in the research community, particularly B3, because that's what I know more about, but in the research community generally. So in response to uh, the growing Maori population, and in fact really in response to current issues, um, the National Maori Biosecurity Network has come into being, and I think that's something that we really all need to support very, very strongly uh, to, to have meaningful uh, interaction with that community. We've heard a little, about, a little bit about the MB program of targeting the urban uh, battlefield uh, from Sandy this morning, um, and that's looking at drone technologies, but also um, a word we don't seem to be able to use anymore at this meeting is social license to operate. Um, we're also uh, very much working with younger people in the population, but um, my question actually is, are we, are we really taking advantage of the older people in the population? We have people like Steve Goldson who's going to retire very soon, and how do we keep him vitally involved in the biosecurity system? Where are you, Steve? Are you awake? Um, I can think of a number of things. I mean, one, uh, Max Suckling said to me the other day, you know, we need to find this insect, and he said, we either need a pheromone or we need Nick Martin, you know? Those are the sort of people we're talking about. We're talking about these, really, these, these people that have a hell of a lot of knowledge there. We need to keep them involved. Changing geopolitical dynamics, the third, the third megatrend world. So we have the greater global interdependency, trade, investments, financial systems. We also have counter reactions to globalization. We see this in America, Britain, not in France, maybe. Um, the economic center is moving south and east. So China will surpass the US in 2013 in terms of economic clout, and perhaps India uh, by 2015. China's new Silk uh, Road, which some of us are, are interacting with, 60 nations, 70% of the global population, close to 75% of, of, of energy resources. So some of those, those are the big global uh, interactions that we're seeing. For New Zealand, I believe we're gonna, be, we're gonna remain uh, a trading nation, we're not closing our borders, uh, and some of those uh, international agreements could be significant to our border biosecurity. China, 
reflecting what's going on in the bigger world, is now dominating our trade. It's also coming now second in terms of our tourism. And again, I just wanted to put those numbers down there in terms of migrants. They're very quite small in terms of uh, the, the total number of people crossing our borders. Visitors, but also New Zealand residents coming and going. So some of the research that uh, we're thinking about in this area. So we've been thinking about uh, Asia, China for quite some time because a number of organisms have probably originated from there. PSA, BMSB, spotted wing Drosophila, spotted wing lanternfly, etc. Um, we also know from some of the research that we've been doing that we need to really tie into the Chinese literature in Chinese because in some cases there's a hell of a lot of inf more information in there than we can find in the uh, international stuff. We've been using uh, the US New Zealand Invasive Species work, uh, Working Group sort of as a proxy for some of the work that we've been doing in China. And we're also part of the International Plant Sentinel uh, Network that has uh, that partners in China that we can use. And there are other initiatives that we really need to be focusing on and we're, we're looking into those as well. Five minutes. Advances, advances in technology, so that's the fourth area. So we are apparently in the digital age and the biotech century. century. This is allowing huge uh, opportunities, I think, in new technology, and there are a whole lot of them splattered up there. The challenge for us, of course, is working out which ones to go for, given that there's so many. Which ones are going to be most effective at biosecurity, and, and which ones are most socially acceptable? And I'd like to really emphasise that um, we're going to have some really uh, important cross-disciplinary teams for that, including biologists. I'm getting to the end of my slides. So. This is a bit of a word of warning, and we had a question over here before, and I think it was very pertinent. So this is um, the so-called hype cycle for emerging, emerging technologies. It's two years old, so it's slightly out of date, but it gives um, some interesting insight into an innovation trigger, peak of inflated expectations, trough of dis disillusionment, slope of enlightenment, and pr uh, plateau of productivity. But it's interesting to see where some of the things that we're talking about uh, now, like bioacoustic sensing, climate data science, and the Internet of Things, and how long they may actually take before we can actually start using them. A warning. So just some of the areas of research that's going on in B3. Uh, and again, I really want to em uh, emphasize the cross-disciplinary nature of these and working beyond B3 and into other organisations. So there's been quite a lot of work on computational science or artificial intelligence uh, in B3, working with AUT. Um, biogeochemistry, working with the University of Otago, looking at isotopes to determine whether a pest species is newly established or not. Bioacoustic uh, sensing, largely working with the University of Canterbury both on wing, wing beat frequency to determine trap catch and detection of invasive organisms uh, within pathways. And more recently, we're looking at some nanotechnology, biotechnology with Auckland University, where we're using insect odorant receptors to detect the aroma of, of a threat in various uh, situations. So I think I'm down to my last slide. Um, so we've heard... Uh, a lot, well, this, this, this session is the context of Biosecurity 2025, and I've tried to put it in the context of looking a bit beyond that in terms of the megatrends. It's clear to me that uh, bios, Biosecurity 2020, 2025 is hugely ambitious, uh, and I'm looking forward to some of the discussions this afternoon as to how we can move that forward. So thank you very much. Thank you, David. We have got time for a couple of questions, if there are any. Veronica? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and um, uh, the, the, the question is around moving from 
B3 to beyond B3 into pest management. And actually, we've got a pretty good example for that coming up next Monday, um, where B3 has instigated um, uh, a workshop on, uh, on myrtle rust for you know, science questions to myrtle rust, brainstorming, gap, gap identifying. And all of a sudden, you know, it's actually left B3's mandate in a sense, but, but um, and now moved into the post border. Well, it's not post border, I shouldn't say that. It's still, you know, it's still a possibility of, of eradication. Um, but it is a situation, I think, where um, B3 actually does hold a lot of the knowledge on some of these organisms before they come into the country, and there is that uh, real opportunity to take that knowledge through into the pest management situation, and that's one example of doing that. Um, um, thanks, David. Um, at the, your B3 conference last year when uh, Minister Guy had finished his presentation, I asked him a question about the need to, uh, for the government to invest more in biosecurity research. His response was, I'm not sure there's a need. Can you prove there's a need? So what have we done, in your opinion, since then, to prove to the government, and obviously we've got a platform now, as Roger said, with Myrtle Russ, that there is a compelling need for additional investment into biosecurity research so we can work on whether it's the carry genome, whether it's a new technology for the border, understanding myrtle rust, whatever. I just feel we still have not landed personally on what we've got in the system at the moment and what we potentially need and what that need could actually achieve. That's a very, very difficult question to answer, <laughs> Barry. And um, there are initiatives. Yeah, maybe we should ask the panel that up. That's a, thank you, Barry. <laughs> I mean, there are initiatives underway to, to look at that, for sure. You know, the, there have been some short-term initiatives and some longer-term initiatives, but they haven't come to fruition yet. But it's something that we clearly need to target more and more. Thank you very much, David.